I'm Bishop Gary Muller. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me in this time of prayer for healing. We face many challenges right now. The COVID-19 pandemic has turned life upside down and, and made life so difficult for so many. We are dealing with a, a realization of the extent of racial injustice, and so we're working to dismantle racism and build reconciliation. And this year's political season has made it abundantly clear just how divided our nation is. We need to do everything we can to address these three issues, to listen to the medical professionals, to have honest conversations, to listen to the medical professionals, to have honest conversations, and also to seek to build bridges. But I think something has gotten lost in the process. We are people of faith. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that it makes a difference when we pray together. And we are uniquely connected as we pray. We need to do everything we can, but one of the most important things we can do is pray together. That is our greatest resource. And so this time of prayer for healing is the beginning of more intentional and hopefully more intense prayer. When we share with God what's on our hearts, as we ask for God's direction, and as we ask God to do what we long to do but cannot, as we trust God and rely on God's power and presence. I want to thank all of those who are participating in this service. And I want to thank all of you for opening your hearts and your minds for the coming minutes as we pray together. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this day as people called Methodists, as the body of Christ all over the state of Arkansas and all over the world. We come before you on this day to ask that you will bring healing to our nation. Lord, you know the many ways that we are broken. We are broken by the reality of this pandemic. We are broken by the reality that we as a nation, Lord, we as a world, Lord, even we as a church are so divided on so many different ways. And Lord, in the midst of all that happens, Lord, we know that our children and we know that our beautiful young minds are are preparing to navigate school. Lord, we know that there are teachers and educators and staff people that, that are working um, to see how do we educate in such a time as this. Lord, we pray for our nation that you will bring healing to our nation for we need the divine touch that only you can give. We desire the healing, the reconciliation, the power, and the peace that only comes from you. Help us, O oh Lord. Heal us, O oh Lord. And heal our nation, and Lord, heal our world. In Jesus' name, we ask and we plead this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We hope to lead you through a time of prayer for healing the pain of the pandemic. We have all struggled to emotionally come together while physically being apart. The quarantine has been putting our life on hold. 
This solemn prayer comes from a deep desire to trust in God's ability to, to keep us from the things that may hurt us. We acknowledge that you, Lord, are the light of the world and only wish for us, your children, good things. We stand today on the scripture from Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, empower us to live with hope, so to comfort the scared, the lonely, the sick, the suffering, the despairing, and those who are passing through the valley of death. So as people of God who believe that God gives us strength, we need. We pray for the caregivers, the medical people, the essential workers who put their own lives at risk to take care of us. We pray for teachers who miss their students and the students and parents who are unsure whether going to school is the right choice. We pray for those who are more at risk than some of us. That's why I wear a mask for others, not for me. We pray for the fact we don't know how long this will last, when we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. As people of God who believe that we can trust God in all things, we pray for those people who have lost loved ones, heal their pain and sense of loss at this time of death. We also pray for those who don't have a job, who have lost their incomes, their homes, their dignity. Please God, don't let them lose their hope as well. As people of God, we pray for those of us who cannot put their needs into words. We know you hear us in our anxious silence and you will send your Holy Spirit to comfort us. We praise you, O oh God, in all things because we know you are always with us and we can depend on you for everything. You are our constant and we know you hear us. In the strong name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we your servants, sons, and daughters take this time to come to you in prayer. We acknowledge your greatness, your lordship, and most of all, your sovereignty. For God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our Alpha and our Omega. God, you are our beginning and our end. With praise and thanksgiving in our hearts and on our lips, we thank you for all of your many blessings, God. We thank you for provision. We thank you for your care, but most of all, God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. You are our father, our savior, our redeemer. God, we know you to be a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless, a friend, a confidant, a doctor. God, we even know you to be our advocate and our deliverer and our healer, for you are the great I am. You have been and you continue to be all that we need. And for that, God, on today, we are grateful. God, we come to you and first of all, we ask you to forgive us for our shortcomings. There are certainly areas where we know we fall short. And so God, I pray that you will give us strength and boldness to admit and to work on those areas. Then God, there may be areas where we are blind and have yet to recognize our shortcomings. And so today, God, I ask that you reveal those areas and give us strength and boldness to hear, admit, and again, to work on those areas. 
God, my prayer is that you would create in us, oh God, a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. I pray, oh God, that where COVID-19 is concerned, you would give us a burning desire to pray, to intercede, to act, to be a non-anxious presence during these times. I pray, oh God, that you would turn our hearts, our ears, our eyes, our desires, our actions away from anything that politicizes, minimizes, or even dismisses the human toll that COVID-19 is having right now. Cause our hearts to be tender, compassionate God, giving, resourceful, and most of all, prayerful. We as a church pray for those who have lost their employment, their livelihood, their financial provision as a result of COVID-19. We ask, oh God, that you would show us how to assist these brothers and sisters. We pray, oh God, for those who have not been as misfortunate, that we would open our bowels of compassion, both in every human way possible and in every spiritual way possible. Being mindful that except for your grace and your mercy, we could be in a like position. Help us to multiply resources as Jesus did with the fish and the loaves. Help us to truly be your hands and feet for those who need assistance. God, we are thankful for those who have been spared from this disease. We are thankful for those who have recovered. And God, we are asking for protection, provision, and healing for those who are still suffering. Lord God, we mourn with those who have loved ones who have succumbed to COVID-19, over 171,000 just in the United States, over 631 just in Arkansas, and Lord, over 771,000 worldwide. God, we pray that you would touch these families and communities with your comfort, your peace, your love, and may Christians worldwide be on the front lines being examples of your comfort, your peace, and your love. And finally, and certainly not least, God, long after this disease has passed, we will need your help to mend relationships, to mend friendships, to mend churches, to mend businesses, to mend emotions, to gather again financial resources, and to mend hearts from the effects that this pandemic has had upon your people, both inside and outside of the church. But God, we trust you to meet these and every need, and we, your people, depend on you to do so. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we want to always be found in your will. And so this and all prayers we pray in the precious and matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God, our help throughout the ages, our hope, our shelter, and our home, we come before you this moment to lament the overt acts of racism our African American brothers and sisters and other people of color suffer every day in our church and in our culture, and the systemic racism that is embedded in our history, our constitution, and into our way of life. Lord, we confess that this way of life has been constructed through the oppression and the brutalization of human bodies, black and brown bodies, created in your image, and those of us with light skin have benefited from this system. Lord, we confess that our church the United Methodist Church, the Arkansas Conference of the United Methodist Church, an individual congregation have participated in the establishment and protection of the structural oppression that is literally choking the lives of the people of color in our midst. We have failed to protect and to aid black and brown bodies as they have experienced violence in many forms from the beginning of chattel slavery 400 years ago until this very moment. 
while the church has remained silent and even participated in the oppression with theology that supported the notion that a black person was not equal to a white person and slavery was affirmed in the Bible from pulpit in the public square. As black Christians, we confess our reluctance to speak truth to power out of a legitimate fear of retribution and to stand up against the injustices we see daily and have suffered personally. We acknowledge our need to overcome our fears, our apathy, or indifferences to stand with the oppressed and marginalized in spite of the repercussions and the call to get into good trouble to do your work in this world. Lord, as white Christians, we confess that we have personally benefited by systemic racism and have much to learn about these failures and how we are complicit in the continuation of the oppression of people of color. We confess that we have been complacent and complicit in desire to be a part of creating a just and equitable society. Your kingdom where black and brown bodies are valued and given the rights and privileges that they have been denied. We pray for fair and equitable treatment for black and brown human beings and for a plan for reparations as we move toward reconciliation and restoration as your children. We pray that white people humble themselves and take the time to learn our history, understand our complicity and how our privilege has benefited us personally and as a race since the beginning of this nation. We pray that white people will learn and listen from people of color as we move forward and make sacrifices to ensure black leaders have seats at the tables where people in power make critical decisions for the health and welfare of all people. But we feel overwhelmed by the works that must be done. This is a process, a journey that will cause us to experience many emotions. So God grant us perseverance, patience, humility, and mercy for ourselves and those with whom we disagree. Grant us courage and wisdom to stay the course and to continue the works of justice for all, to make things right in order to avoid cheap reconciliation. We pray for our leaders in the church and in the world, for men and women who you have called to public service to lead us in the accomplishment of your purpose in this world, to be a place where each human being is given the opportunity and resources to thrive and live the full and abundant life Christ died for all to experience. The works, the ongoing works and the spiritual works of dismantling races we need you to send a shockwave into the hearts of women and men into the hearts of boys and girls into the hearts of the young and the old and people of various ethnicity uh, race dialect 
send a shockwave, oh God, into Christianity, into Islam, into Hindu, into Buddhists, into Muslims and other community of faith. Shock us into a oneness of dealing with this demon that keeps breathing life into a perpetual system of sickness that keeps us on our sick bed. We need, oh God, double portion of your love, a double portion of your love so that we can come to that healing moment of recognizing how sick racism really is. A double dose, oh God, of your love so that the infection of racism will be broken. Only you, Lord, only you and your love will heal us and give us what is needed to get off of our sick bed. As we are healed, let us minister to others who are still lingering in sickness. Others who are lingering in a state of not seeing one another as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. So that we can all walk, get us off of our sick bed, so that we can all walk out of the intensive care unit, celebrate what your love, what your grace, what your mercy is able to do in the lives of people of all walks of life. Finally, God, mind us in prayer that your son Jesus prayed. All the statement that he made when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you will do, God. Jesus' name. Amen. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you for the gift of your grace and the mercy that you pour upon us each day. Lord, you have told us in your word who you have invited to your sanctuary, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongues and who do not do evil to their friends, nor take up reproach against their neighbors. Holy One, we confess that we have not always acted in ways that demonstrate love for our neighbors or other people in our nation we have added to the polarization that our nation is experiencing. We have by our words and our actions been quick to slander others and to look upon each other with reproach. We have abandoned civility, polite discourse, and looking to the best interest of others. We have rushed both to judgment and to the internet. We have used our words to spread division in our country and in our communities. We have decided that our hot takes are more important and more to be desired than a warm heart alive with your Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, bring to our minds at this time those times where we have acted callously, where we have in person, in conversations, on social media, or even in our church and families been less than kind and been less than graceful to one another. Lord, in your mercy, please forgive us. Free us from the sin of polarization. Creator, you have also told us that it is good and pleasant 
when sisters and brothers live together in unity. We confess to you the division that is in our denomination over the interpretation of Holy Scripture and human sexuality. We acknowledge, Lord, we are like Jacob and Esau wrestling in Rebekah's womb, each sibling trying to grasp the other for their place and for their father Isaac's blessing. Especially today, we confess that we have hurt one another. We have lost trust in one another, and we have hindered the mission of the kingdom of God. We ask you now to bring to our minds one person that we could interact with, that we could contact or have a conversation with or write to, who disagrees with us theologically, but who we could encourage in the middle of this time and in the middle of this crisis. Holy Spirit, in all of this, we ask for an attitude of humility, of patience and kindness, that it would possess our hearts and our minds. It is in your precious son's name that we pray. Amen. As we continue to pray together today, there will be moments of silence, allowing you to offer your personal petitions. Let us continue together in prayer. Eternal God, your children are hurting and deeply divided. We come from all walks of life, different experiences, different types of families, rich, poor, hungry, sick, young, and old. Our hearts are heavy and full of concern and uncertainty. Help us to recognize the value of each and every person. Help us to remember your love for everyone. We know from 1 Timothy that we should pray for kings and everyone in authority so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life in complete godliness and dignity. Meet us where we are today and grant us the wisdom to move forward working together. We pray that you grant wisdom and discernment to all leaders. Help them to work together for the good of all making decisions that will benefit everyone and make changes that will affect our futures in positive, meaningful ways. Today, we ask that you hear our prayers for all local elected and appointed leaders in our cities and towns. Oh Lord, hear our prayers all elected and appointed county leaders. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. All elected and appointed state leaders. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. All elected and appointed national leaders. O oh Lord, hear our prayers, all world leaders. O oh Lord, hear our prayers for the United Methodist Church, the local church, our districts, the Arkansas Conference, the global church at all levels, our pastors, and our laity. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Help us listen to understand so that we can respond in ways that are meaningful and will make a difference in our world today and going forward. Help us to be the people you want us to be and to live the lives you want us to lead here on earth. O oh Lord, hear our heartfelt prayers today and always. In your blessed name, amen. Loving God, in a time when there is so much fear and uncertainty about the future, you remain constant. 
We know that we will always be able to turn to you and find support, find peace. Thank you for allowing us to rest easily with the knowledge that you are always with us. As we move forward into the future, it is so easy to become hopeless. It seems like darkness is everywhere we turn. However, when we look closer, we are able to see you at work in each of our lives. Each time we are met with a kind word or glance or experience the joy of reconnecting with loved ones, it becomes a little easier to remain hopeful. Let us continue to find you in the everyday moments and gain hope from your presence. Growing up in a world where people so easily turn to hate, help us to meet each day and each person with love. You have placed a special calling on each of our lives. The same way you have uniquely shaped us, you have given us each our own special gift. Every single one of us has the power to change the world for the better. As youth, help us to realize we are worthy, we are loved, and we are strong. We have so much to offer as we work to shape the future. Allow us to work alongside the people we look up to, the ones who can offer us so much wisdom in order to build our future. The future belongs to everyone, and everyone has a place in it. Even though we don't know what the future will bring, we still know you can help us make it beautiful. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for all of those who have offered prayers as they have joined their prayers with your prayers as we deal with COVID and a quest for racial justice and reconciliation in our own nation. Several weeks ago, I got a, a call from a friend of mine who said, Gary, we've just got to pray. I believe if we got on our knees and we prayed, we could be healed of COVID. I was grateful for that individual's passion. And I was grateful that she took the time to call me. And I hope that as you heard the prayers offered and, and you prayed throughout this time together, that it will be a time of renewal of your own prayer life. And that what began here will continue in earnest every day. And if need be to fall on your knees to pray. God answers prayer. God changes us through prayer. And God transforms the world through prayer. Thank you for your time today and your time in prayer for the weeks and months to come. Pray with me. Lord, I am grateful for your people who love you enough that they set aside time to open their hearts and souls, every beings, to pray earnestly, seeking your will, sharing what is on their heart, trusting you more and more and more as we deal with the COVID-19 crisis, Lord. Bring healing, physical healing, to those who are hurt. Bring healing of spirit and mind to those who are depressed and struggling. Help those who are without work and afraid of the future and concerned about their children and their parents. Lord, give us the healing you know we need for COVID-19. Help us to do the loving thing as we interact with other people and to be wise and smart, but also, Lord, help us to do the godly thing so that all of our actions are out of concern for living the Jesus way in what we do. Lord, as we struggle with centuries of racism in our nation and in our church, I pray that you will move hearts and minds and change people's attitudes and how they act so that together we can strive to make right the sin of racism and to confess and repent and act in new ways and then to turn toward the task of building reconciliation 
so that indeed we live out as the body of Christ the fact that there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. Please, Lord, help us. Help us to show that Jesus changes hearts and lives from the inside out. And Lord, as we deal with a polarized world, which seems to be ever drawing apart in our nation of left and right and progressive and conservative and liberal and traditional, all those differences and the gap being wider and the kind of demeaning of other that goes on and the kind of hatred at times that shows itself, soften hearts. Help people to realize and to believe and to act that we are all American citizens. We are often brothers and sisters in Christ and that we need to act like it. It seems sometimes the harder we try, the farther apart we end up. And so we pray for those divisions. Lord, we know you call us to act responsibly, and we know you call on us to live the Jesus way. Help us to do that. But Lord, where we cannot do that on our own, we pray that we will trust you completely and more and more every day. And we pray, Lord, that you will bring healing COVID-19, healing for racism, and healing for polarization. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to do what we cannot on our own. And Lord, May your will become just as real on earth as it already is in heaven. And may you use us to accomplish it. And I pray this in the strong, strong name of Jesus. Amen.